No, I think they could, right? I think it's just a matter of understanding to what extent are they trying to, I guess really they have to decide what they want this theme to be when they, when it grows up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, I, I don't mean that sort of facetiously. I, I mean that sincerely, like, do they want it to be like those porcelain Christmas villages where you just add on a new, you know, feature set every year? Hello, bricks, chicks, and minifigures. You are listening to AFL's Welcome, where we talk about all things Lego from the perspective of two adult collectors. We are your co-host. I'm Grinch. And I'm West. And today we are doing our long-awaited, long-anticipated Winter Village theme review. Let's get into the show. But before we go over to the theme review... Let's talk about some exciting Lego news. Exciting Lego news. So first of all, we are recording this a little bit early. And by a little bit early, I mean like five days earlier than we normally would. So if we missed any news, please drop some knowledge in the comment section so that everybody can be up to date with that. And we apologize about any news that's missed. Uh, but what we have for you this today is the Captain America sets that were just revealed and are available for pre-order on Lego's website. And then West and I, we're going to talk a little bit about the plans for the remainder of the year as we bring our first calendar year of AFL's Welcome to a wrap. But before we do that, Wes, did you see the Captain America sets? What do you think about them? I did. I saw images of them right before we sat down to record. There's three sets. We have the um, brickheads. Construction. There's, uh, yeah, there's one of the like buildable action heroes, and then what looks like just a standard playset. You know, they look fine. I. I <laughs> it's weird to see. Uh, I. I think Marvel is still struggling. And, and so I don't know, we'll see how this movie does in the larger scheme of things. Mm-hmm. I, these sets don't necessarily inspire me, but Marvel hasn't really inspired me lately. So I, that's, you know, I think par for course when the subject matter is kind of tough. So they don't really give a ton away either. Uh, I suppose based off of what we sort of know about the movie and and what to expect right so you get a red hulk and uh, the sam wilson captain america as the brickheads and then you have the sam wilson captain america mini or a buildable action figure and then what looks like a aerial battle with some sort of micro-sized uh like quinjet almost right so some sort of Avengers or shield or whatever they are now sword uh, Quinjet, but in a very small single person form. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, it's not like a smaller build like we got in the big Avengers tower, right? It's just kind of like a one person solo operation. So anyways, those are kind of my thoughts on the matter. Grinch, what do you think? Yeah. Different, different scale than a Quinjet. And I, I, didn't go back and rewatch the trailer, but I don't know if it's from it or if they went rogue and kind of did their own thing. Um, but it, it looks okay. I was actually looking over here because I have my Red Hulk big fig down there, and I'm just it looks very similar to it, just like they updated the hair to the more recent Bruce Banner hairstyle, and that's obviously going to have that removable head. Um, so that is kind of what it is, but I think. The Captain America minifigure, you know, Falcon, Sam Wilson looks really cool. Yeah. I really like the head. Like, it's using a a printed, that same helmet for Captain America that we've used in the past, but with updated printing. And uh, there's just something about the red on this print that's a little bit more red than usual, I feel like. I don't know. Just looking at images, of course, so. Uh, it looks okay. I'm sure this is going to get a little bit of hate for the price because it is $55 for 223 pieces, uh, which does feel a little bit expensive, even factoring in the big fig. 
I I would like to see this probably closer to forty five dollars personally. Um, so I don't know. It's it, it's also interesting because I believe these are coming out December first. Mm-hmm. However, the movie is coming out February fourteenth, and they'll sometimes do them that early, like they did that for Infinity War. I feel like, but that movie was much more anticipated. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if Lego had just like produced these a while ago because that movie was delayed. Uh, Because I think it was originally supposed to come out this winter. And uh, I don't know if they were just sitting on like the inventory or something and just needed to get it pushed out or what. But the brickheads look good. The Sam Wilson Captain America brickhead looks really good. The Red Hulk looks very similar to the original Hulk that we got. Just obviously red. And then the construction figure is what it is. I'm not like a huge fan of them, but they're certainly like better than the construction figures that they've they've attempted like in the past like this whole kind of newer system is it works as a system at least you know Mm -hmm. but it's still Mm -hmm. like i mean we're only getting three sets one of them's a brickhead one of them's a construction figure and one of them's a overpriced play set like yeah doesn't give you a lot to to go on yeah which you know hey like black widow the marvels etc like some of these smaller scale MCU sets, they will just do one set. So mm-hmm. that's not unprecedented by any means. No, no. And and so it's interesting, right? Because you can kind of guess based on how many sets are created, sort of what the general vibe of the movie is in the studio mm-hmm. of like, hey, do we think this is going to do really well? Like pump out 10 or 12 sets, you know, like for a Star Wars movie release. Whereas when it's like you said with like black widow for example right like they just had one set so or mm-hmm. the marvels uh one set and so you kind of ant-man yes yeah, they just that, did a construction that, figure <laughs> that feels a little like not disingenuous but you're like man you guys don't even really think this thing's gonna do well i i don't know, stuff, I, I, I don't would, mind it because yeah. like when marvels was releasing three movies a year like uh, five to six to ten sets per wave would have been rough so like it was just kind of nice but like here's the one set for the movie and like usually for the most part they they try to capture like the most important vehicle or something and you're like okay cool we're good it definitely you know changes things when your lead actor is arrested for assault and uh your lead villain and so you have to kind of pivot your series as you uh build it you're so, referring to Jonathan Majors for people that don't know. Yes, yes. Um, but I wanted to back up and and just make another kind of spicy comment on those big figs or the buildable figures, which is, you know, I think it's totally fine to not enjoy them as long as you're not setting it on fire for YouTube likes and views. I think that's probably... Did somebody... Did that happen? Our favorite YouTuber did that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You... A big, like, set a big fig on fire. It wasn't a big fig, but it was one of the buildable action figures from uh, the Rogue One series, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's interesting though because you're like, you know, you can usually tell, you know, what you know how big a movie is going to be based off the number of Lego sets, right? Like, mm-hmm. Infinity War was very thought out with like, okay, there's the six infinity stones, we're going to have six sets, like get one from each, you know, set. And this, I feel like they're kind of like, we don't, we don't know what the hell is going to happen with this movie (laughs) because it's like, it's three sets, but it's like a brickhead, a construction figure, and then an overpriced place. (laughs) I think you were onto something with the thought process of, I think that they just had to get these out off, you know, their inventory, make room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I'm sure Lego has some warehouse that they keep these finished sets in before they ship them off somewhere. Right. Right. But it's not like that space is infinite. You know, they're they're not like like this. This currently exists in the world somewhere like it's ready Mm -hmm. to ship Mm -hmm. on some, you know, tank or something, you know. Absolutely. It's not like they're sitting in like some dude's backyard in Denmark and he just has like a, you know, towel Mm -hmm. over him or something. Giant maybe, pallet of maybe. Lego sets. Maybe, maybe it's like that. Yeah, how like Boeing when they had their airplanes backed up, they had to like park them in their parking lots. Maybe like instead yeah. of uh, you know they're like, hey, uh, at the Lego house, sorry, no visitor parking this week. We have sets out on the street. 
Uh, well, and and I think too, part of the challenge Lego probably has is like they have to do the initial production run. So like if they had already kind of had this going, mm-hmm. and then we're sitting on inventory, like what's well, keeping other use, stuff from like, being made? You're also holding up other, you know, exactly, yeah. exactly. So especially as maybe they're a... just like, let's just get this pushed out and see if it sells and. If it's not selling well, maybe we don't have to do another run. Well, especially as you approach the holidays too, right? I mean, mm-hmm. so I don't remember, was the movie delayed because of the Thunderbolt Ross actor passing away? And then they have to do reshoots for that? Or was that? Um, I don't think they got, he he passed away a while ago, I thought. Like it's been Harrison um, Ford for a while now. I forget why it was delayed so much. I think it just, um, I believe it was the writer's strike. Yeah, that could make sense. So yeah. Anyways, all right. So, <laughs> what else are we rolling with before the end of the year here? Yeah. So let's talk through our end of the year game plan. We have three more episodes of A Falls Welcome before we wrap up for the winter holiday to give both you and I a much needed break. Uh, but before we end our year, we have three episodes to talk about and the first episode is going to be a lego ideas theme review so we talked about lego ideas this last episode i think you and i had a great time with that kind of vibing off of our sort of mutual uh distaste for the ideas rules change right um some more than less but you know i think we both agreed they were maybe not the best thought and so i was like hey let's just keep this thing going right let's keep this party going let's just talk about lego ideas in general so that's our our first one our next one is a holiday buying guide for our listeners and viewers where we'll be going through the lego pricing tiers that you can see at lego.com and we'll be selecting which sets uh we would recommend uh to to pick up or purchase and and grinch Mm -hmm. and i'll just have kind of a back and forth discussion on it and then our kind of like our top five lego sets of all time but more of like Hey, all you know, I did a video on my YouTube channel, Plain Old Grinch, like two years ago now about like a holiday buying guide. It'll be similar to that. Yeah. And I think that one will be fun because I think one of the things that we are going to aim to do is argue why our selection is like a good, just in general set, if that makes sense. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, we're not necessarily picking like the set we would want. It's more of like a, Hey, I think if you had to buy someone a Lego set under $25, this is a really good Lego set to buy. And here's my reason why. So that'll be kind of fun. So hopefully for our listeners, you guys get a pretty good understanding of, of, you know, why we are recommending that set and why we think it's a a good one for whoever you're buying it for, which if it's for yourself, that's okay too. And then lastly, we're going to do a year in review. And we're just going to talk about the 2024 Lego year to include uh, sets that we liked, didn't like. We're going to kind of come up with some uh, different criteria and, and, you know, discussion points for this year and, and kind of end things on a bang. So, Grinch, I'm mm-hmm. excited for these next three episodes. I think it'll be fun. I'm excited for this episode. I'm really, I'm really excited. Well, yeah, this has been long, long <laughs> over, well... We had to do it around Christmas time, but um, I'm really excited for the 2025 four year interview because I kind of like, I think it's fun to like look back at the year, especially while it's still kind of fresh because, you know, you'll look back and be like, oh, wait, that set released in January. I forgot about that. You know, like it's Mm -hmm. when you're, when you're looking back at like 1999, like we did, it's like you anticipate it to be long ago, but then all of a sudden when you're looking back at like january and february like i didn't realize that was oh my god like i that i thought this was old and and it just it's fun to do like an annual retrospect and i think we'll um try to come up with like some good awards slash superlatives for the the episode itself too so that'll be that's always a lot of fun and i think it'll be good banter back and forth yeah and i did um want to correct the record real quick Captain America Brave New World was pushed back from May of this year mm. or July. I'm sorry. God, mm. I just got it wrong twice in a row uh, from July. <laughs> Nailed it. And, uh, oh, it's been a long day West. Um, but yeah, it was pushed back from July. And so I don't know, maybe my theory about them just having inventory needed to get out wrong. It just seems weird to have these nope. sets releasing. I, like I think that's still two checks. and a half months. 
I yeah, it could. I mean, they could have had him ready was, back then, right? Yeah, they probably had him ready, right, or or ready to rock and roll. And yeah, no, I still think, I think that makes sense because even think of how long it takes for them to build a Lego set. Yeah, based off of brand new IP, right? You got to do prints, you got to get stickers made, so all that's got to be loaded up like a year in advance, right? I mean, think of how often we st- see stuff leak ahead of time, right? So like. I, I think you're spot on that this was probably an issue of like Lego just basically being like, look, guys, we've we've got to get these things moving because we're losing space. Although at this point, I would imagine their holiday inventory is probably pretty squared away. Yeah, OK, OK. Since I brought it up, <laughs> I just checked the Black Panther sets for the first Black Panther movie, mm-hmm. and that also had a February release. I believe even earlier in February than the 14th. If I if I remember correctly, I'm trying to do that from memory. Six years ago, holy crap! I'm old. Oof. Black Panther came out six years ago. <laughs> and, um, Great movie. Those sets released January 1st, which makes more sense, mm-hmm. right? Like, I don't. I don't know. It just seems weird to release them December 1st. Unless they're trying to capitalize on the holiday buying wave. And maybe that's the the real push. But like... They're just trying to move some inventory, dog. I I just like... Like, oh my gosh, I can't. I'm so excited for this movie. It's it's (laughs) December 25th. Like, hey, Johnny, what do you want for Christmas? The new Captain America sets up. So it's two months away. I need it now. Like, (laughs) if you were smart... You'd be like, well, I want these Lego sets. And then when the new movie comes out, you'd be like, but mom, everybody has these Lego sets. Now I need the new ones for the new movie. Like, pro tip, y'all. Pro tip. <laughs> Wait, are you saying like synchronizing your branding efforts so that they are complementary instead of working against each other? Correct. <laughs> did you go to business school? I did. <laughs> Like if you need a new director strategy, you know who to call. All right. All right. So that is our exciting Lego news. We've got uh, just a couple sets released. We didn't have a lot of news to talk about, so we wanted to go over the plan for the rest of the year, get everybody excited for that. And we are looking forward to closing this first year out with a bang. But before we close out the year, we have to talk about Winter Village. So let's get over to our main topic for the day. Hit the horn, West. Today's topic. All right. And on that, we're here for our main topic today, the Winter Village Collection. This is obviously a holiday sub-theme. And by holiday, it is very incredibly influenced by the Christmas season. Uh, and there are 16 total Let's call sets. Call a spade a spade. Yeah, it's it's a Christmas theme, y'all. There are 16 total sets starting in 2009 to today. It's been through three rebrandings from advanced models to creator expert to icons, right? I mean, so it's it's one of the longest running sub themes in Lego, right? Like the modulars. This, like the fairground themes happen kind of intermittently. You know, obviously, like other themes of have been occurring for longer, think Star Wars, but as far as like a sub themes go, you know, usually those only last for like a couple years or till mm-hmm. the kind of, you know, till the vibe dies out a little bit. So this has been going on for, for quite a while. And there's there's really two unofficial you know, sub sub themes here, right? Or product groupings that you'll hear people reference. We'll talk about the village sets or the more fantasy or the North Pole sets, right? And so personally, I feel like, you know, you either like them all or you gravitate towards one or the other. But West, I want to hear from you. What is your history with this theme? Yeah, so in 2009, well, to back it up even further... I first started playing with Lego in 1993. <laughs> uh, too far, too far. Oh, okay, too far. sorry. Go me... forward, uh, go forward. Yeah. Well, in, yep. in all seriousness, you know, we, 
for the holidays for us growing up, Lego was definitely a big part of that. Right. And I, I'm sure you felt this way, but like, I think I kind of enjoyed the Christmas time or the holiday tradition more or felt like I had a more meaningful experience when a Lego was involved. Um, to some I, extent. I personally West enjoyed it with my family, but I whatever. See. I see. Um, which Gosh. <laughs> It's gonna cry here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Is that why you don't come to Christmas anymore? <laughs> but we did get one year our first Lego train, which was the nine volt Lego train. In the it was the black and yellow uh, passenger kind of train. Passenger train, yeah, with like the weird sort of cargo modules that you could load onto the back of it. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of our first foray into the train theme. And that connected us kind of trains Christmas, right? There's that tradition of putting trains in Christmas villages and around a Christmas tree. And so, which is a strange connection. I'd love to learn more about why trains and Christmas trees are a thing. But, you know, for us, naturally, it was Lego train and Christmas tree. And so uh, we kind of always associated Legos and Christmas. And so in 2009, when they came out with the Christmas winter village. I think that was a very natural association that our parents had, which was like, Hey, let's just do this. So that was a gift I received one year. Um, and I was kind of in my Lego dark ages, but as Grinch, you've kind of mentioned before, like I, I didn't necessarily have like a complete dark age, but at this point, like I wasn't really buying sets for myself and, and pursuing Lego sets like I, I would have in the past or would to come to in the future. And so uh, this was kind of like a set that I would get every year for Christmas and it mm -hmm. would be something we'd build and enjoy. And it, you know, they, each year they just started growing and growing the theme out and every, you know, they just got a little more intricate and you could sort of see Lego picking up their, you know, getting more and more confident with each set, which was really kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and so even to today, I still get them. I've bought uh, one set twice. I bought two train stations. My intent was to build it in reverse and set them side by side. And I still have not done that. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much I needed to have bought a second train station, but I did. Uh, so I have every single but one. But if you did, shouldn't you do it? I probably should probably should so yes i have i'm i'm up to date i just recently bought this year's set so that was exciting and that's kind of my my story in general with it my favorite set or do you want to start sorry why don't you share your story grinch um well unlike my brother i really enjoyed family around i'm just kidding love lego um no, I mean, so 2009, I was in ninth grade. I guess I was technically in eighth grade, sorry. And that was like when the not only love for Lego died down, but like the resentment and hate of Lego. Because like I was too cool for Lego, you know? And now I look at myself, eighth grade Grinch would be like, <laughs> like cringing. And that's okay. I love where I'm at right now. And uh, eighth grade Grinch would should be jealous, but eighth grade Grinch you had were some always strong opinions. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's about life and morality, and <laughs> but no. So you were always getting these sets, right, for mm -hmm. Christmas. I think our mom bought them for you every year, and I'd be like, oh, so lame. Still buys Lego and get it for Christmas, and then I'd be like, where did you put that set again? I was just, what, what did you say it was? You said it was a bakery. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and so always a little bit jealous and that kind of became like my your tradition and like i kind of like channeled through it a little bit to be like oh what 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 was it this year you know just kind of like oh okay just enjoyed it from a distance sort of thing mm -hmm. and then when i got out of my dark age i went like full back into the winter village like i loved it and ended up getting all of them then this was like before like adults started getting back into lego so like they were still relatively affordable and i mean I still paid secondary market price for them but i got them all and i actually set up my own winter village instead of a city got really into that 
and quickly determined that, you know, it was either going to be collect Lego or do custom city stuff because it was just both expensive. And I went with the uh, collect Lego, but I still collect these every year. I guess a unique part of my story is the YouTube channel before it was a false welcome was plain old Grinch. And I actually did a ranking list of all the winter village sets. I guess it was one of my more controversial videos because I gave the uh, gingerbread house the the honors of being the worst set. And my thought process or the reason I said that was just because at the time there was that in the Elf Clubhouse and like North Pole. And I didn't really like the fantasy side of the things, right? Like the North Pole set was so-so. And the Elf Clubhouse was like a good build, but like it was just kind of a weird build at the same time. So for me, I, the Gingerbread House was the single best set. But then when looking at the Winter Village as a whole, it became the worst set because it just didn't fit in, right? Like when I experienced the Winter Village, it was all about the village itself, right? Like the bakery, the post office, the toy shop, like those were the classic scale and size mm -hmm. of this for me. And when they came out the gingerbread house, it was like two or maybe even three times that size. Hey, Grinch, and it's okay. just let, let your hate you know, flow. It, no, no, it's not hate. <laughs> I still stand by the fact that like, you know, it's a Christmas tradition to build a gingerbread house every year. And if you had to pick one set to like rebuild every single year, it would be that, in my opinion, in my opinion. And so I just gave it the last one because it just didn't fit for me. And even the club, Elf Clubhouse, like, at least went along with the Santa's workshop. But, like, this was just its own thing. It's bigger than the fire station. And Tiagio uh, Caterino, who has a YouTube channel and actually was the Lego designer of the set, commented <laughs> on it <laughs> and called me out. And that was kind of funny. And, uh, you know interesting when you know i was like oh shit the lego designer actually listened to this video <laughs> and um good showing but i will not let that sway my opinion i stand by that list although it's probably updated slightly since then uh but what's your favorite yeah well first i want to just mention and shout out tiagio he's that was a very kind rebuttal to your uh, video and as a as a big brother i appreciate that um because it, it wasn't it was all in the kind of you know love of lego and in a good spirit and i think he recognized your your take and was kind of just ribbing you a little bit so i i like i said i appreciated that uh that he wasn't kind of you know he wasn't toxic at all. He's a, he's a really good yeah. guy. No, he is. He is. And, and his stuff, you know, his older videos are a lot of fun to watch. I still watch his, his stuff that he puts out now. It's just a lot of fun to watch his channel. So if you guys aren't checking that out, uh, rec highly recommend that. And he does in his older videos, some really fun, like build tutorials, which I, I wish he'd bring mm -hmm. back because I, I love seeing what he puts together. He's, he's got a great eye for detail. So as a, as a former Lego designer, but that wasn't the question. The question you asked was... <laughs> it was not, who's your favorite YouTuber, West? It was, fair. what is your favorite Winter Village set? I see. Um, you know, that's a tough That's a tough one to answer. It's I, hard, I, isn't it? There's so many really great yeah. sets that stand out. One of the ones that I thought and still think today of is, is one of my favorites was the original Blue Cottage that they came out with. Really? Yeah, I really liked that one. I really liked the kind of wood mm. uh, shop um, on the side, and it had that really fun snowplow truck build. So it was just kind of cool. Okay. I, I just thought that was I'll... a really fun fun building experience. Yeah. So yeah. It, it definitely, because for me, I think that was sort of peak old school Winter Village, right? Like it, it really was the... I think it peaked with the toy shop. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That well, was the first one, guys. It was, well, depends, right? It depends on which version. <laughs> it it just was a it, it was a great one, and and so I think that was really fun to see. Um, of the newer ones, I really actually liked mm -hmm. Santa's visit. I thought that one just was really polished and and looked fantastic. And 
in my mind is kind of the uh demarcation into modern lego winter village i i know the elf clubhouse was was kind of using the modern visuals and everything of the icons line but that santa's Mm -hmm. visit i thought just just the way they nailed the curves of the roof and the styling and the tree and some of the details on it. It was just really, really pretty. I, I thought they just did a fantastic job with that one. So it's kind of reminded me back of the old blue cottage too. I It's funny. And I'm, I'm curious to know people's lists. So if you're really into the winter village, just drop yeah. your list in the comment section on YouTube or, or write a falls welcome because I it's, it's, that YouTube video that I did has my worst like to dislike ratio, which is still like a good ratio. So it tells me like people somewhat agree with me at least. Uh, but there's, there's like in the comment section, there's like people that are like a hundred percent and like, you know, a bunch of likes on that. And there's people like this dude's crazy for putting the gingerbread that low. Like what is this dude smoking? You know? And like as many like it's like the presidential election it's like 50 50 right <laughs> it seems like and um it, it, it and it's just funny you said that the original cottage was your favorite i i never liked that one only because it just was so it was the first one where it's like we might have scale challenges within this sub theme because mm-hmm. like the toy shop the bakery and the post office were so well scaled to one another like consistently mm-hmm. that like they literally were just built on four eight by elevens. All and then this one came out and had a sixteen by sixteen, I think, in white, and then like another one, uh, eight by sixteen on the side of that. It, like it just was like twice the size of those, and literally, in most, in one case, two times the number of pieces, and in the other two cases, one point nine times mm-hmm. the number of pieces. So like it literally was almost twice the size. It's and a, so, like, that's where it, it just kind of it, it stands out to me and, and not in a good way. Yeah, it's definitely a bigger build. I, I, I will give you that. And, I, you know, I think that that's just kind of part of the part of the thing, right? Is, is it's mm-hmm. just, kind of, yeah, you just kind of have to, to take it or leave it. What's interesting is if you look at it today, I don't, it's like it, it, when I saw it years ago, it, I thought it was kind of like peak Lego building techniques and <laughs> and styling and, and molding, right? And, and designing. And now it just reminds me of how far Lego has come. But there's it's blocky. It's got sharp corners. It's, you know, there's not as yeah. much, much polish on it at all. And I, it's like I said. The snow detail on the side of the roof using the slopes was like... <laughs> You're like, wow, this is incredible. And now you look at it and you're like, this is like Jesus. Yeah. So it's definitely, I think, again, especially if you compare it to the new Santa's visit house, Mm -hmm. it's just so much better. The new Santa's visit house in terms of the styling and, and it is kind of a night and day difference. So it's kind of interesting to see. Do you remember that one Christmas you set up the winter village at her parents' house and you were missing a minifigure? And there's this lady in this set with like the red shirt on holiday sweater thing. Mm -hmm. And you, I mean, looked for like a week for this minifigure. And I think you even blamed me. You're like, where did you put it? And I'm like, I didn't put it. What are you talking about? (laughs) And it was like, she was in the chair in the living room the whole time, like of the cottage. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Like just like in the chair was like flipped over or something. I still have. (laughs) No, I have her. So (laughs) I apologize. There you go. No, it, it's a fun one. It, it's like I said, it's it's definitely the the cottage is is large. Um, but what you know, we talked about the best like a winter village. So set. for for me, my favorite. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> is the the next <laughs> winter village market? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I would still say Santa's visit. I think that's why I said in the video before. I don't mean the Winter Village Market's my favorite. It's a dark horse for sure, and I think it doesn't get enough love. Do you mean the main uh, street? I really like the market stalls. No, 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 no. It's it's called the Winter Village Market, but it's the carousel. I see. Okay. And I really like that one. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think I liked the whole market aspect of it. 
And I remember after I got this one, I made my own little market stands too, Mm -hmm. just to kind of like build it up. And it just, it's so unique, but in like a good way. And I don't know, I, I, I like the size of, you know, at the time we didn't really get, this was like before the fairground collection. Right. So like there was, there was the grand carousel back then, but like this was, you know, pretty small usable carousel and, it just added a little bit of diversity to the village setup itself in a good way. Yeah. You know, I'd be interested. The one thing I am not a huge fan of with that one is just the clunky mechanism for the spinning carousel. And I know you can put it onto a motor. I'm wondering if there's a mm-hmm. modern way to make it spin just a little smoother. If that makes sense. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But part of it, too, was like the horses would drop on it, so they appeared to be bobbing, you know? Mm-hmm. And the print on the actual horse's head uh, was really good, in my opinion. Yeah, so I'm and, sure those um, are I don't know. I just, horses. I always like this one. They probably, yeah, probably yeah. are. No, that was a fun uh, but, one. I would agree. I think that's a good one. So, you know my least favorite set. <laughs> but I have to ask you... What is your least favorite set? And Tiagio, if you're listening, I will apologize in advance if he says the one I'm thinking about. But also, if you're listening, we should have you on the podcast. <laughs> yes. Uh, least favorite. It's hard because none of them are necessarily bad. I mean, you could sit yeah. here and be like reactive and be like, well, the train station's whack. I, I I mean, it still looks good. You know, it's a little small, but it like looks good. I think I have a tie for two of Ooh. kind of my Ooh. my least favorite. One of them would be the Christmas train, actually. Okay. Um, I just everything on it. I just want it to be bigger. And I know you actually bought two to try to expand yours and. I quickly realized that's not a good way to expand it. Just buy the pieces to expand it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a difficult, it uh, doesn't always work out the way you want. So if you don't like this train, what do you think about the unofficial like win- winter train that they came out with before the winter village was even a thing? I like that one even less. Um, really? Yeah. Because, because I really like that one. Well, I just, so I guess it's tough, right? A, I don't remember really seeing that one or, or keying off on that one as a kiddo. Mm-hmm. And so there's not a huge nostalgia factor for me. And then when I see them side by side, I just, I'm not overly thrilled with like either of the builds, to be frank. I And and what bothers me about the train, like I said, is, is it's small and it just, <clears throat> it leaves you just kind of, at least for me, wanting more. And so it it doesn't really work well as like a fun passenger train. And usually when I set up a train like station or a train set up in my winter village, mm-hmm. I put it off on a siding and it just sits there and it never runs on the on the track at all because I don't really have a use for it. And to motorize it, you had to put either a nine volt under the uh, the coal tender or you, you know, you'd have to put at th- these days, you'd have to put a battery somewhere, and you put the battery in the cool tender. Well, the cool tender was, and then that you big put the motor. That's how you had to do it, though. And then you had to, it, and it looked, it looked out of place. Mm-hmm. And then you had to put the motor sticking in the back of it to power. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about something else. No, you had to put the pow- uh, cool tender had the battery, and then you had the little electric front piece the bogeys, but yeah. the front wheel would skip because it wasn't heavy enough mm. so it would just sit there and it would just essentially pull itself and the big wheel would just skip along it wouldn't oh, actually you're, rotate you're suggesting running the cable into the main car and where they have the two front bogies putting the powered bogey mm-hmm. yeah i was thinking you'd put the powered bogey underneath the coal tender but it wasn't built for that scale so you'd have no, to significantly modify it so, right, which isn't impossible, and that actually would probably work better because you'd have the weight of the battery pack on top of the coal tender, so you get some good friction there. But at, at the end of the day, again, right, like it wasn't designed for it. Everything just feels kind of squished. Um, 
and I'll mm-hmm. kind of leave that where it is because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, I like that set, and that's fine. That's fine. I actually think it's pretty consistently like one of the worst because, yeah, like you said, like they did try to go like they try to go for like a classic toy train versus a functional train. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Go check out the the other Winter Village train after this and yeah. give it a second thought. It, it looks dated for sure. No, I'll, you but, know, I think that's worth taking a look at. Um, the yeah. last one or the next one that I would say I'm I'm tied for is the Santa's Workshop. Those reindeer don't exist. They can't hurt you, says my therapist. <laughs> So it's not only the reindeer, which were notorious because they would fall apart very easily, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a combination of the reindeer, the way they are connected to the sled, which is just with these, like, you know. The flex tube. <laughs> yeah, this flex tube that even the modern one still uses the flex tube, but, like, it's. I don't know if it's just it's better or what's going on, but the the mechanism there is just I think way better on the modern one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the actual build for the workshop building itself looks really nice, but it's just it's just a facade, and everything in the back is just really really open, and so there really wasn't much of a building there. It, it was really more mm-hmm. of just kind of a a smaller building build to complement kind of the array of stuff that you got and and it was fun but i just i don't know i would haven't been super excited about it uh as i put that one back together uh you know when i rebuild everything every year it's just that one mm-hmm. doesn't bring me as much joy as some of the other sets do so but what about you Grant? yeah it, it's That's also right, interesting yeah. because like the re if you look at retail price like it was sixty dollars fifty five dollars seventy dollars ninety dollars ninety dollars and then seventy dollars when the santa's workshop came out and i was not collecting these at the time but like looking back at it and looking like toy shop that's cool bakery it's kind of cute little bakery thing you know it's pretty Mm -hmm. cool like it's nostalgic for me for sure the post office like one of my top three still like I, if they re- I like, love that post office cottage, you talked about the cottage and I'm like, I'm so, so on it, but you love it. And then the market comes out with the carousel and you're like, Whoa, this is popping. And then the Santa workshop comes out and it's like smaller than all these other ones. <laughs> and it, it feels like a step back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It really does. It really does. So. No, it does. And, and it just, that was the first time they introduced the fantasy theme. And it, it, which mm-hmm. wasn't, I think, a bad thing. It just kind of was a weird and awkward transition inside of the Lego Winter Village. Because everything yeah. was consistently village. And then this one just came out of the blue. And and like I said, like it wasn't a bad thing necessarily. But it just, it's just really stood apart. What's interesting is it took them a long time to go back to fantasy after that. Yeah, it really did. So it was 2019, five years later, that they went back with the gingerbread house. And before that, I don't remember exactly the year, but they had a little gingerbread house gift with purchase too Mm -hmm. that -hmm. came out. And like for me, that was enough of the Fantasy 4A. Yeah. Like that was good. That was good. But Grinch, what about you? What was your favorite? Or sorry, not favorite, but your least favorite. Well, I've already told my story about the gingerbread house and without being too controversial, I'm just going to I'm just going to leave that one there. So, I do want to say I talked a little bit about the challenges with scales when I was talking about one of my least favorites. And when I say the cottage is one of my least favorites, I know that's one of your favorites, so I'm saying it's like lower quartile for me. Um it's do you okay. agree with me though that there's some challenges with scales here? Are are you okay with it? I mean, the classic Winter Village, like the porcelain Winter Village from back in the day, kind of always had scale challenges too, right? I mean, mm. you know, you get weird sized build, you know, 
castles that are the same size as like a bed and breakfast that are the same size as like the Coca-Cola factory, you know, like is scale an issue here or is it just a big nitpick? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to side on the the side of it being a little bit of a nitpick, but I, I do understand. Okay. I mean, you know, when you look at like the firehouse, right? Like there's a lot of like scale challenges there uh, and differences. And you look at, like you said, the gingerbread house is gigantic compared to some of the other sets. The new Santa's mm-hmm. village is a pretty big build compared to some of the other sets, right? If you go back to the original ones and, and their prices reflected it too, but they were a lot smaller and, and quainter, if you will. Um, right. I don't think it makes it impossible to set up, but you know, when, for example, you were trying to build out your winter village kind of display, right. you were really thinking it through from like a mills plate perspective with, you know, kind of a grid system that you were building your village off of. And I think that would be really difficult. I think you have to kind of lean. It was, it was what drove me to stop doing it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I I say that too, because right, like these are all done in the dollhouse style where the backs are open. And what makes that challenging is when you're setting them up, I found that you kind of have to set them up in such a way that you're mostly looking at the fronts. Right. And so, yeah, you can't, you can't have like a modular city block here, mm -hmm. you know, you're not, you need them kind of all facing a similar direction. Yeah. You're not displaying the backs, you know, and, and those are Mm -hmm. fun. It's fun to access them and play with them. And, and, you know, I mean, that's kind of the entire point, but if you're, if you're setting it up for like a more of a visual look, then yeah, you have to kind of set them up in such a way where you're featuring the front of the builds versus the, the back of the builds. And so, I think when you kind of use that as your focal point, you're less focused on scale and how things kind of fit together than you are maybe kind of setting more of like a story, right? So kind of my two cents there. What do you think, scale? I I, I agree with you. They're not in scale at all. So as as time has gone on, I've gotten less caught up on it. I think I originally got caught up on it like back and I held on to that for a while, but mm-hmm. I think I'm, I'm ready to let it go it, the scale can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> um, you know, with the toy shop to bakery, to post office, to the markets, to the Santa workshop, to the toy shop re-release to the village station. Like I would consider all of those in scale and the cottage, the um, fire station, it would be like the two exceptions, right? Mm-hmm. Where they're kind of like, oh, this is a little bit bigger than it should be, or a little bit smaller than it should be. Or since then, we're kind of all over the place, and and now I'm kind of like, you know, I feel like the Holiday Main Street kind of is back in that was back in that original scale, and that's maybe why I liked it so much when it came out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think now I've kind of moved on from it a little bit. But I, I and because probably because I've just moved on to like the modulars being in scale and like. <laughs> I don't display all these together or anymore. There's just too many to like bring out every single year. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's hard to set all 16 of them up now. So, you know, it, <laughs> what used to take you an afternoon, you know, when it was, was five sets to six sets now it takes you like all day <laughs> slash weekend. <laughs> Well, especially with the depending on too. on how you're exa- well, exactly. Like actually get them set, like depending on too, like how much you take them apart. Right. Like, mm-hmm you can kind of loosely leave them together, but something falls apart, right? If you take them too far apart, then it takes forever to get them back up. So right now, what, I, what I'm what i just planning on doing is just displaying the most recent yeah. couple and leaving it at that. So it bothers me less, but do you think it'll create challenges? Like as we kind of continue our conversation, we're going to start talking about, you know, the future of the Winter Village here in, in a moment do you think it creates some challenges with that future? Because like you, you know, they've been very consistent with this $99 threshold. And I'm very happy with that, by the way, Mm -hmm. personally, like love, love that for Lego. They've been keeping these at $99 for the past almost 10 years now. Right. Like that's just crazy. And 
d- d- does that create challenge? I mean, you can't have a winter village, you know, downtown hotel, can you? You can't have a, you know, winter village castle. Like one thing I like to do is go look at uh, Limax or Department 56 and go look for winter village inspiration there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you can't do some of these things because they just, you know, they've never really cared about scale either, right? It's always been more of in a bubble for the Winter Village stuff. But with Lego, you have to have so much space to get so much detail into it, right? Yeah, that's a good question. And I don't think it really does because like you said in your own sort of telling, where you're like, well, I just put out a few of them every year, right? I think it's a problem if you think of the collection as a whole and you feel like you have to display it as a whole. But Mm -hmm. I think if you were to display the modern sets, for example, or, you know, you pick and choose, or like I even have added to it, right? Like, and I know this is a little controversial, but I took the... um, Honeyduke set and I added it into my winter village mm-hmm. and I literally store it with my winter village. It's, it's just a part of my winter village. And it, it, that feels to a similar scale though. It does. It does. And, 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 um, and it works, but right? the home alone house certainly does not. <laughs> no. So and, and there's sort of, you know, limitations and pluses and minuses right. there. And, um, you know, it's just, it is tough. Right. And I think as collectors, this kind of goes back into just, we've, over the course of this year, you and I have kind of circled around this idea of like keeping a theme whole for the sake of co- collection, right. Or kind of turning it into something of your own. And so I think if you are coming at it from this perspective of like, it's a collection and needs to be displayed as a collection, then yeah, I think you're going to see, you know, the, some challenges with a through line between all of these sets because truthfully i don't think lego really had any idea about what modern winter village sets would become in 2009 when they released their first one right i mean even, yeah, they had a very clear system back then right even famously with modulars right like the idea of every single one of them having a white lamp post wasn't really popularized until they did it a few times and then they're like Oh, okay. This is going to be a signature. Guess this of this is a series. thing, exactly. <laughs> and, and so, I, you know, I think we're seeing a Lego series evolve over time, which is really fun from just like a really nerdy perspective of like, you know, kind of seeing Lego because you're seeing a history of Lego as a company evolve in these sets mm-hmm. in some way, and so that's really neat too to see an experience right i mean and famously the the toy shop is kind of a really great representation of that right where they had a plan for a different set i don't know if it was ever public what the set was supposed to be uh but they i don't even know if that was tech i mean that i think that's just been a rumor yeah maybe tiago for, can answer for, that when he's on our podcast <laughs> yeah for listeners that aren't aware, they did a re-release of the toy shop, which was the first ever one. And it was rumored that it was re- only re-released because the they canceled that Winter Village set that year, kind of last minute, and they needed to push something out in kind of like the last couple months, allegedly. And Lego never came out and said that, right? It was never tweeted or there was never an official statement. But that's always been the kind of working theory there. And it's interesting because the the sets are distinct. If you put them side by side, you, there's enough visual differences in them. There's enough similarity where they're... There's some... I mean, it's like the old Mad Magazine, like, what's the difference between these two images? And, like, if you look, <laughs> you can find it, but, like, it's ultimately the same set. Yeah. So it's fun to see... It's as close to a re-release you can get without yeah. re-releasing it. Yeah. I think they took on the awning, on the red and white awning. On the original one, they have a one-by-one one brick on the bottom of the curved mm-hmm. re- uh, dark red piece. And on the remake, they moved it to the white one. Oh, so it went red, white, red, white. I see. And then they put... Yeah, I know. I know. So, like, super Careful different. Careful, Lego. <laughs> 
anyways, I, I think that's, that's kind of my take on, on your question. I know that was kind of a long winded explanation. Um, mm-hmm. but, but I do think that's interesting to see. And I would challenge to you mm-hmm. that I think for you specifically, you really like to see things as a collection holistically across the board and to kind of no group, idea what you're talking about group them I don't together. Have... All of my, well, I don't have some of my Marvel figures right here in the <laughs> podcast room right now with me. So I think that's that's definitely, you know, a, a take that you'd be a sim- yeah. sympathetic to, which is okay, right? That's your perspective. But what do you yeah. think? I mean, did I just kind of pull the curtain back a little bit on your own thought process there? Or what do you think? Uh, no, I think I've I've kind of moved beyond it now at this point with this theme. They, they it, now it's been consistent where it, there isn't really mm-hmm. a consistent scale, right? Like back when I first started collecting them, it sure felt like there was, and now that we're you know six eight years removed from that, I guess eight years removed from me collecting it, six years from me feeling like there's not a scale anymore. I'm like I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um. I do think it does limit a little bit because if you do look at like Department Fifty Six or or Lee Max, Lee Max, um, you know they they commonly do stuff like it, it is almost in the same scale as everything else, right? Like it's like you know like it feels like an eight by six or something. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. I don't actually know, and you will see like the Home Alone house like shrunken down or the Griswold house shrunken down, and that's the same size as like. Like the a tower, like a, uh, or downtown. What's the old department store in New York? Uh, Gr- Grumbles, Grumbles, whatever it is. Um, you know that famous old department store that's Macy's now. Um, <laughs> you know they're they're the same size, mm-hmm. right? So like, I do think from a Lego perspective, that is much more difficult to do, right? Because it's not painting and porcelain; it's literally like 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 you have to work within the Lego brick. So yeah, I do think it. You know. It'd be hard to get the Winter Village downtown mall. Like I think that's why we got the mark, uh, the um, town center or whatever mm-hmm. it was called mm-hmm. again, the main street. You know, that's as close as we will get to like a mall per se, right? Because they are still trying to fit it into somewhat of a scale and keep it at that a hundred dollar threshold. Well, and it it also, you know, I think we'll see with this new Santa's post office set this year that the scale question will return. I, I think the building. Do you think so? I mean, the inside's really small. I think the outside is, it, it, in my mind, looks a little not to scale. That one feels smaller than. It does feel smaller for sure. Than what, yeah. uh, like, the Alpine Inn lo- looks and feels like. So. Um, it, it feels smaller than, like, the Elf, Elf Clubhouse. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm hmm. So that it also be, has a little bit of a larger presence. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see how that plays into the kind of the, the larger scheme, but. So how do you think, uh, you know, we're talking about the future here. How do you think Lego can keep this uh, theme fresh? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't, I think they're definitely grasping. They're starting to get to a point where the theme is feeling a little long in the tooth, if you will. Right. Hmm. It's, um, I really, I'm, I don't think that, but I'm interested why you do. Well, I liked the Alpine Inn last year. I think that was a mm-hmm. natural evolution of the theme. But I think, you know, we already had a post office. So to call this one Santa's post office just feels like Lego's running out of ideas here. That's kind of the vibe I got from this set this year. Doesn't mean I don't okay. think it's going to be a fun set to build. I'm, I'm excited to put it together, but it does feel like there's some freshness that's kind of missing. Um, But I, I honestly don't know where you go with this theme, right? Because I think, you know, the same reason why we haven't gotten a modular hospital, for example, is the same reason why, you know, I think for Lego, right? Like, if you're going to stay within the village theme, for example, you know, you're not going to create a pub because you won't. Um, what about a hot chocolate or yeah, a chocolate store would be great. Right. They're, uh, but they've already kind of done main street where they sort of introduce small shops. 
you know, they're, they haven't done like a cafe. So there's that, right. They haven't done like a hardware right. store with like trees. I was, and... My hardware store is like one of the first mm-hmm. things that always comes to mind for me. They've alluded to it. They've had that little tree farm thing mm-hmm. gift with purchase mm-hmm. that one year. Right. They've, they've had little bits and, and snippets of, of something here and there that, you know, could be from a hardware store, but they've never done it. You know, they, they haven't done like a town square set and I could see that with like maybe a town hall build like town hall yeah sure. and then maybe like a you know with like a clock tower and then maybe like a statue or a large tree out front kind of reminiscent of the trees from the toy store set i i mm. think that certainly could be possible right I, i'm not going to discount that at all but i do think you know we we came up with two or three ideas there to for lego to use but we're kind of grasping at straws other than that. You know what I mean? So I, I, th- Oh, I'm, I've got, I've got a billion ideas, <laughs> a police station. See, I think that just feels There's a police station, hardware store, yeah. cafe, hot chocolate. Uh, they still haven't done like a proper, sweet shop either no like there's eight no. years of winter villages right there that's just off the like top of my head i don't um, think you'll ever see a police station but why not well i just because within the winter village there's no like what would be the role of the police right i just think it'd be cool to get like an old 50s style police car yeah with like an old school like police sergeant type of figure and like that is a classic. It's a classic Lego, village. Lego figure. It's a big, and it's a classic winter yeah. village like porcelain set, right? Like, why hasn't that happened yet? Yeah, I mean that's fair. And I don't, you know, to be frank, like I don't think there's any sort of anti-police bias here. I just think Lego is trying to capture the whimsy of the holidays, and mm-hmm. I think it's, you know, there's a fine line to walk between, you know, maybe the mixture for nostalgia and whimsy and some fantasy is a constantly changing mixture, depending on which year Lego's kind of pushing out. But the average does sort of feel consistent, especially now that they've done a few fantasy sets where, you know, we can expect a fantasy set every few sets or kind of a small fantasy wave. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of get back into a few sort of village sets, if you will. I don't think it'll follow like a as as a distinctive a pattern as like the modulars have, but but you know yeah, what would the I, next I, fantasy I think there's a lot of fun be? that they could do too. Yeah, what what would the um, next fantasy you, set be? If if you I, I wonder if they'll, something. I wonder if they'll ever get into a license and do like a Grinch house or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, or like a Charles Dickens apartment or or downtown house, downtown flat. Um, you know, they could do something like that. Uh, as far as fantasy goes, um, I, mean, I, I think they might explore more with the elves. Like they did, they, I, they might the, do a workshop, right? Well, they might redo the workshop, right? I could see that. But they and having it be called Santa's like the house. elf workshop. Yeah. Right. They never did like the North Pole. Um, you know, they, I don't know if they'd call it like a pharmacy if like you go back to like real stuff, but like they could do like, you know, classic pharmacy thing too. Um, and and see, I think they that, could do like a winter village barn or a farrier, yeah. you know, like I think that would do a vet clinic. They could get more into the, you know, go back to the market section where they did the winter village market and do, you know, expand on something similar to that. Right. No, I think they could. Right. I think it's just a matter of understanding to what extent are they trying to I guess really they have to decide what they want this theme to be when they, when it grows up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, I, I don't mean that sort of facetiously. I, I mean that sincerely, like, do they want it to be like those porcelain Christmas villages where you just add on a new, you know, feature set every year and Hey, this year is a covered bridge and stream vignette that we put together and you can add it to your collection. Or, you know, this year is a, um, you know, a winter parade with Santa Claus or something, right? Like, and here's a bunch of cars. I I think 
that's not necessarily the direction Lego wants to go, but I do think from a long term, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see him go that direction. I think from a long term survivability thought process, though, that makes sense. So, but what you know, I would what see are, them, what are you thinking? I'm curious. I would see them remake. Yeah, I like wouldn't with, hate that. Like how they've done with the Elf Post Office. Like they would never re-release, and I I wouldn't want them to. But they, you know, they could do a updated bakery, right? A new boulangerie, you know, the the winter boulangerie, or you know, like call it something different. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily mind that. I, Winter Village Lighthouse would be kind of a ski cool chalet too. would like, be fun. Ski chalet, we kind of got that a little bit with Alpine Lodge, but like you yeah. know, fully go into it. So I, I think there's still a lot here. It could be a ski um, patrol, you know what I mean? Yeah, there you go. Like the South Park episode, but <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I I I wouldn't want them to do re-releases. Uh, but I, I do think a reimagining, you know, a reimagining could go a long way. And they've kind of already started that a little bit. What I think we might see happen is like every four year, every three year, we'll get a fantasy. Mm-hmm. Every three year, we'll get or four year, we'll get like a reimagining, and then we'll get like the fresh idea. Two of two years as well, right? Like two of the in a four year period, two of them will be like a new set. One will be like a reimagining, and one will be like a fantasy. Would be my yeah. kind of guess to keep it fresh i like that idea and like i said i like the idea of them revisiting i think you know for sets that are extremely nostalgic for us the post office the bakery Mm -hmm. you know the bakery had those weird like stacks of things i don't know if they were supposed to be sandwiches or what that you put underneath the counter And they always yeah, slipped just, out. Just the tiles, just the just, random like colored yeah. tiles. Yeah. <laughs> so annoying. Like, okay. And like it's a great I guess this is a rotten loaf of bread. Yeah. <laughs> Where do the baguettes go? Um it's a great set. It's a lot of fun, but like it in my I, mind. I like the bakery, but I always see it ranked low. It's a, I well, guess people don't like it. It's a small building and, and, and it's fun, right? But like like I said, I think it just it could use some updating, right? Like I don't Sure. So so could the post office. Yeah. No, it could. It could. So I, I don't mind that idea of them revisiting some of these older sets, but my fear would be as we've seen things go, the Lego sets are kind of getting thinner and thinner. They're getting more and more of a facade as those buildings continue. We saw that, especially with the main street. We saw that a little bit with even the Alpine village or the Alpine Inn. you know, they, they did put some depth into it, but there wasn't a ton of depth uh, like some of the older sets used to have. And so that would be one of my concerns as we continue to see these facades just grow out in, mm-hmm. in this capacity. And I, I would, be disappointed if that were the case so i i'd I'd say it's kind of always been that way too they have um i think the exception is the original cottage but like the original post office was six studs deep and i think now what they're doing is they're keeping it like five studs deep and then they're building out of the back a little bit so Mm -hmm. there's a little bit more of like room to sit on without building up the side walls or they're doing like what they did with the remake to Santa's visit where they're kind of building the, the, the walls at an angle so that the interior is a little bit bigger, but it's still ultimately like only five studs deep. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I'd say, I'd say they've been pretty consistent with it. I, maybe you're just growing as a Lego builder. And um, I mean like the winter village toy shop, for example, like there's not a lot of room in there. Like they have, two toys on display in the window and like a cash register. Yeah. And like this weird, like workers, like loft with like <laughs> three open doors on each side, you know? <laughs> I mean, that, like, I think that was intended to be Santa's workshop or like a toy workshop up there. Like in the, it act. was, it was like the guy but, that owns the toy store. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's talk about some, data or data however you want to say it um we talked about the bakery Mm -hmm. fun fact that is the cheapest retail set 
and also the smallest at 687 pieces. The what do you think has the most pieces? Trivia time. Oof. Well, I think it's got to be. Oh, man. Most pieces. It's the Alpine Lodge. <laughs> okay. 15, 17. And the second most. The cottage. The Main Street. Damn it. At 15, 14. Nice. And the third most. The cottage. The cottage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most minifigures is nine with the re release. I'm sorry, with the uh, Winter Village Market. Mm hmm. Um, but we talked about, you know, we talked about it throughout the episode. You know, one thing they have done has been very consistent with the price on these sets. Yeah. They have never been more than $99. The first one to hit that $99 threshold was back in 2012, mm. 12 years ago with that Winter Village Cottage. 1,490 pieces, eight minifigures. The most recent one was $99. 1440 pieces and five minifigures for the new Santa's post office Alpine Lodge. We just talked about 1517 pieces, $99. So they've been very, very consistent mm -hmm. and they've shown a lot of discipline, you know, especially as we've talked about how Lego's gotten bigger over the years mm -hmm. and more piece counts. They've been very consistent. I'm very happy about that too. Do you think that that's in a good spot? I do. I think these are some of the best valued sets there are. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and I think that's exciting to see. And we get a lot of great prints. We get new minifigures with these sets. Um, so there's a lot of great variety in here. Yeah. You know, the only thing I think would be a little disappointing are sets like these with the elves. Um, the, the elves, I mean, they're neat, but they're just, they're sort of consistently... I wouldn't say underwhelming, but there's not a lot of variety in them. And so yeah. you just kind of get the same elf over and over and over again, or some variation of like different, different facial feature, different facial features or like one of them has a blue hat and one of them has a red hat or like one of them has red pants and blue pants. And mm -hmm. they all have some variation of like a button down jacket that they're wearing. They look fine. Right? Well, personally, I'm team red pant. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But like in the new set, we have one who's kind of who wears like a flight jacket. And that's kind of fun because he's in the balloon. So mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense. So there's definitely some. Um, West, I hate, I hate to break it to you. They all have that same print. Oh. <laughs> he, he just has a different hat and facial expression. <laughs> and he's got a doofy smile oh. with his little buck teeth. <laughs> He's like, hey. Oh dear! Really enjoying that flight. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, buddy. I hate to raid on your parade like that, but yeah, they uh, nope. they rain all away. have the same jacket and uh, facial expression here. Rain away. Um, what do you think is the most expensive on the secondary market? Hmm. I feel like it would have to be either the. Uh, gingerbread house or interesting maybe the cottage just because it was so big but i don't know what are you what are your cottage is number two okay the post office oh followed by the bakery or sorry followed by the cottage followed by the bakery wow okay and then that's kind of a toss-up but then it's like the Toy shop, the train, and the the station. Mm -hmm. Fire stations all pretty close to retail still. Gingerbread house is a is pretty close to retail. The um, elf clubhouse is like still at retail practically on the secondary market. So it's it's pretty consistent as far as like everything else goes, right? It's just kind of slightly above. Yeah. Uh, but the the post office, the original toy shop used to be like way higher than the post office. But then with that re-release, that's practically the same set, uh, except for a couple of new mini, you know, a couple, well, I think it's one new minifigure mm -hmm. and like they redesigned the tree, the inside of the tree. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's right there. They're, they're all kind of this 150, 180 range. 
So, I, you know, Grinch, your question or your comment there at the end has inspired me on something. So I, I have a question for you, and this is an uns- oh. unscripted question. Before I say that, okay. I, I also want to pass along. There's a builder on Instagram, and I was reaching for my phone, but I'm going to put it into the links for our listeners. If you go to our Instagram page and you check out our link in bio to our link tree, we'll have some episode uh, notes or links. And I'm going to link one of the Instagram builders who actually will take these sets. Um, For example, like the firehouse and he actually builds the back Mm -hmm. to them and he does a really good job. I I don't know if he's necessarily just buying a second set, right? As we've talked about, that's not always the best idea, but he does complete them and they look really, really nice. So I will link him in our episode 31 uh, link uh, links for this next week. But Grinch, the question I had for you Right. One of the things that the Lego Winter Village has done rather creatively and consistently is the use of a light brick. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, in the beginning, it was pretty straightforward. It was used either to light up a fireplace or it was used to. (laughs) I wouldn't say creatively. uh, Fair. (laughs) But since then, there have been some really interesting techniques for incorporating Mm -hmm. the light brick. And then some really interesting ways that the light brick has been used. So I have a question for you, which is, what is your favorite light brick um, build? Easy. Okay. Um, I think the Alpine Lodge did it in the fireplace, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Santa's Visit. Do you remember what they did for that one? I do. It's built into the tree. The mechanism wasn't perfect because the tree kind of sits on it a little bit, mm-hmm. right? And it kind of like dangles, not dangles, but it's kind of like loose, loosely just sitting mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. But I loved it because they designed the inside of the tree to be hollow so that the actual like little transparent, you know, what were supposed to be lights on the tree lit up. Yeah. And ah, uh, I just thought that was a good use. I saw, I, I saw that. I was like, mm, that was good. I don't mind the fireplace usages. I think the Alpine Lodge obviously has has done that really, really well. I think the Gingerbread House did it really well with that outdoor fireplace design that just was kind of unique. And, and you know, pressing down on the puff of smoke was a really cool way to incorporate that feature mm-hmm. into the set, right? Um, the newest one with the, the post office, it's incorporated into the burner on the balloon, which I think is really fun. So yeah, that's a good one too. I think they've just, they've come up with some really creative ways to incorporate these, these into the set. And I think that's kind of a neat idea. So I just wanted to pick your brain on, on how, which one was the best for you. So my favorite is the toy shop where it's just literally sticking out the back (laughs) with a red button to press. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's a joke. (laughs) If anybody could tell that's a joke, that is a (laughs) joke. Uh, but I think we're about ready to wrap here. We've been yapping on the Winter Village for a while, yeah. and we could probably yap for a little bit longer, but we will save that for next year. <laughs> what? Any closing thoughts on your end? And then I have one final question. Um, I think, you know, Grinch, I think I've said it all. I, It's a okay. really fun theme. I look forward to it every year. This is one of the ones that you and I will text back and forth about, and we'll sit there and be like, when was the last year's announced? I think we're getting really close and every year it seems to sneak up on us. And I'm just like, Oh yeah, we should be hearing about this like any day now, you know, within the larger rumor ecosystem. So it's always fun when we do get, you know, that information. And I think we're starting to really dial that down. Cause I think this year I said it to you and like within a week we had information of like the first rumors starting to float. Nope. Well, pun intended. Um, and so that was kind of interesting to see. So anyways, what about you? Closing thoughts. All right. I've I've said it all. <laughs> I think we're we're good. Closing question for you, sir. Okay. What do you think the 2025 Winter Village set is going to be? And if by some miraculous reason or you know ability or whatever you get this right, I will buy it for you. <laughs> I mean, who can turn that down? But I think maybe maybe the Grinch. 
maybe the Grinch. I think it's going to be a North Pole set. I think it's going to be called the North Pole. And I think it'll be more of like a Santa's house with maybe like a reindeer stable. And Okay, if it's a workshop, it doesn't count. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some elements of that incorporated. You know what I mean? But like, I think it's going well to be... on the post office sign on the new one. Mm-hmm. There's a like a little. It's like you're at the post office, and it's like this way to the clubhouse, mm-hmm. and it's like that way to the workshop. Is there a North Pole? And maybe they're referencing the original one. I think they are, right? I mean, they're referencing the clubhouse, so maybe. Yeah. That that would be my my guess. I think we're gonna see another fantasy North one. Pole. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Grinch? All right. But for the bet's purposes, <laughs> just if it's well, if it's just a fantasy one, that's not correct. It's got to be the North Pole, and I'll give you or Santa's house. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we finally get a sweet shop. Okay. A candy shop. Yeah. Uh, that has been. I don't want to say long overdue because nothing's necessarily due, mm. but it's been one of the more obvious ones for me. Yeah. Uh, especially when we got like stuff like a bakery. Like they're going to do another shop, I believe. Uh, it's been a while now. It's Main Street. That was that would have been three times ago um, that we got some form of a shop. So I think they'll do like a proper like a sweet shop, maybe like a little candy swirl on the mm-hmm. top or something like that, you know? I think that would back be fun. To kind of their classic roots, especially if it was a. And I know we're trying to wrap up, so I'll, I'll. <laughs> go go right ahead. Well, you've got me thinking now, right? And like, the, 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 the do tell, do tell. Original Winter Village sets were always kind of fun with. Their... No, you cannot change your guess. <laughs> I'm not. Their European vibe, right? There, it was sort of this like French, German. Swiss, Switzerland kind of Swiss uh, themes in the buildings that they were designing, right? Which makes sense too as a Danish company with some of the Norwegian or, or Nordic themes to kind of incorporate it into those mm-hmm. buildings, right? So not only was it a holiday theme, but it was definitely like a like Northern Western European kind of holiday theme as well. And so I think a sweet shop would really work well here. And you could see they just released that mug piece with that was used for um, Harry Potter used it for uh, and the CMF in the CMF butter beer. for butterbeer. Right. And then, uh, yep. I mean, I think most people use it for like alcohol, but <laughs> they did just release but for what for alcohol. What's that? What's oh, alcohol? That's a good point. Um, they released one with like a brown liquid in it. Right. It looks like coffee. And I forget what set that came in. If it's the botanical garden or it's not coffee, <laughs> hot chocolate. Um, it's not hot chocolate. Do you know <laughs> what's, what's in the cup? <laughs> <laughs> no, what's in, what, tell me West, what's in the cup? <laughs> tea. Um, it ain't tea. <laughs> which set is it this? It is a brown liquid. Which set is this? Uh, that came out with it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess I know what you're talking about. Oh, but continue, continue. Well, I just think you know that that if with that piece already being created, it that would make a lot of sense. So yeah, I like that idea. I like the sweet shop idea. So I I need to to be careful betting against you though, because you you won on the Mercedes one, and you've uh, so you've got a good track record right now. Well, I'm still waiting for my set, so it's in the, there's that. I'm, I would love to say it's in the mail. It's on my shelf. So <laughs> you almost said it's in the mail. <laughs> well, you said it's in the. Yeah, I'd love to say that, but it's on my shelf. You know, the checks um, in the mail. Uh, quip is. I'm going to start charging interest. Okay. So for every day late, I get one other Lego piece. At this point. I'd be a Lego piece billionaire. Oh my gosh. But I won't hold that against you. That starts now. I'd be a Lego drama queen, more like it. Already am, <laughs> brother. All right. So that is our Winter Village theme review. We love the Winter Village. We've got a lot of passion for it. And we hope it sticks around for a very long time. I think recently we've we've gotten some bangers. So um but let's close there and then let's go ahead and move over to what are we building 
this week. What are we building? Mr. West. What are you building? Yes. Um, I am not, I haven't had time to build anything this week, but I did just recently go out to the Lego store. I picked up my winter village set and the, uh, accompanying, uh, delivery truck set, uh, which I'm, I'm not super keen on, but it, it looks fun. It looks a lot like the moving van that they came out with in uh, a gift with purchase that came out with the jazz cafe. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a nice little truck. So like, don't get me wrong. It's a fun build. It just, I think this, they're very similar. Um, but I also picked up a, um, a Duplo set for West junior. Cool. Yep. Oh, um, I thought it was for you. No, it's for West junior. And I did it because I wanted to get over the $130 threshold so that I could get the gift with purchase. And I went to go check out, you know, checked out and everything. And the guy like hands me the receipt and I'm like, Hey, you know, did I meet the threshold for this? And he's like, Hey, uh, he said, you didn't, um, you were three cents short. (laughs) And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Well, can I like, can I offer you my two cents? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Um, I was like, yeah, you know, can I add, something to the purchase and he goes no you're gonna have to return everything to do this and i'm like well i do really like that like you know books the bookshelf set it's really fun like i want to get it and so you know it wasn't very hard to find a, a set that would get me over the next that 130 dollar threshold and now it's kind of angry or not angry but you know well what other what, set did you get i got the natural history museum so I crushed that threshold. <laughs> I would have been a dick and returned everything. Yeah. And then got a keychain. And I should have, to be fair. Like, I, I, I'm i not... I told my wife leaving, I was like, I might leave those guys like a not great review. Because I usually try to leave them good reviews. You leave them, Mr. Karen. <laughs> Ask for the manager. But, well, you know, it is it is a way of giving feedback. I, I think I'm, I'm practicing being a disappointed dad rather than like an upset dad. And so here's my disappointed dad take, which is I'm disappointed that after recognizing that I was a Lego Insiders because he asked for my Insiders information and I gave it to him, that he did not recognize or take the opportunity to let me know that I was three cents away from the spending threshold for a gift with purchase at checkout. I, that would have been really appreciated. So for that, I'm a little disappointed. In his defense, did you ask him after the transaction was completed or when he would put everything in the bag and handed it to you? Well, they don't hand you the bag. Like, wait, I don't get, after the transactions completed. So I wasn't sure. Okay. To, to your point, it was as the transaction was wrapping up. So, I mean, obviously, cause he could have just added something to it, but that's where I mm-hmm. feel like, you know, really solid customer service would have been like, Hey dude, by the oh, way, hundred percent, you're three cents away. I mean, you'd be like, Hey, sorry, you're three cents short, but if you go spend another $300, you can get this gift with purchase. <laughs> well, you know, especially too, is like a Lego insider. It's like, I think you can assume that like, I know what's going on with the gift with purchases these days. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, and I have seen them do that before where they'll be like, Hey, you're actually just like $5 away from like this gift with purchase threshold. Do you want to find something for $5? And you're like, twist my arm, like $5 in the Lego store. <laughs> Easy. Well, I had a different experience. Yeah. I got the X mansion I went on Friday, got the expansion, got the, and like, norm, like when I did, when I got Rivendell on day one, they like handed me a card and were like, you were in line. Like, what did you want? Here's the card so that you can claim it up front and like go shop. But like in this case, like I had to go just buy it mm-hmm. and then I could shop again. So I got it and I got my, both my gift with purchases. And then I was walking out. And I had ordered the Nightmare Before Christmas set because it was on back order like a couple days earlier. 
so I could get that. And I was like, oh, I'll just get two gift with purchases. He, 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 he. And then I left and they had the Nightmare Before Christmas set. And I was like, oh, crap, I'm just going to buy that here because mine's on back order and it's not going to ship till February. And my wife really wanted it. So I was like, yeah, let's like enjoy it like at Christmas when mm-hmm. you're supposed to, not like in March. Mm-hmm. So I went and I got that, went back in line and they pulled out another gift with purchase. And I was like, hey, just just so you know, like I've obviously already got one. And she was like, oh, do you not want this? And I was like, oh, no, I mean, I'll I'll have it. I, I, I thought it just said like one per household. She goes, well, I don't care if you don't care. <laughs> And I was like, well, no, I care. I want it. She's like, okay, so here you go. I was like, I mean, I did just spend $500, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I ended up There's spending that. $430, so. But you went to the wrong Lego store, and that's on you. I no, I'm just... <laughs> and, then, and then on my way out, I stopped in the front of uh, the glass, and I saw the Botanical Gardens, and that was a mistake because I was like, Ooh, that looks way better in picture, like in person than it does than look great. The pictures do. Wow. It looks so good. I think so then I bought that picture. when I got home, <laughs> and now I have three. We need to talk about your spending habits. I'm on a budget. I don't think you are. Uh, everybody's technically on a budget, so <laughs> argument valid. Fair, fair. Uh, So what did I build this week? Uh, I've been working on my shelves. I posted a a picture. I finally got like my door figured out. That's been a journey and it's so perfect. Like for the struggle, it's like I I got it to a good spot where I wanted it. That's awesome. And um, I'm just giving them like a couple weeks just to make sure like there's no long-term issues with it. Just, I don't know, just in case Mm -hmm. there's no reason to rush through it sort of thing. Spending a lot of money on plexiglass and door material might as well, might as well make sure it works, you know. Yeah. Um. So I I did I have been working on that and um, just uh, I've actually been working on as you can see getting my Marvel figures reorganized in a new way, um. And just because that's been a struggle, I think I'll make a video about it because I think I finally got a really, really good way to make them. Or sorry, display them, which has has always been a challenge with something like Marvel. Star Wars fans go through this because there's like in Star Wars there's a thousand plus minifigures, and you know you probably display it by movie, but then they come out with a new movie set, and it's like, well, I've got all my Luke Skywalker's over here, so now I got to move everybody down one peg on the display shelf, and you know that's literally moving a thousand minifigures, and if you don't, you know. <laughs> Then three months later, they come out with a new episode four set, and then you got to move everybody down again. And so um, I think I finally figured out a good way to display them, and that's just by year and then by figure, by like sub theme, because yeah. that will never change. I think that makes sense. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. I've already overcomplicated it, and now I'm uncomplicating it. There you go. All right. And, uh, oh, and then, like, as far as, like, building Lego, because, like, that's what we like to do here. I'm working on the Jazz Club and the Brick Bank mm. right now. So I liked the Jazz Club build. I thought that was a good one. Yeah, it's very good so far. I just didn't like the first level, but I was missing a piece. And that's annoying. Yeah. Were you able to backfill it with your own? I don't have a lot of the dark orange. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it was a dark orange one by four. It just, it's not, I love the color. I just don't have a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I did is it was like one of the top pieces on the bottom level. So like, there's just a couple tiles over it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I just put a pink piece there so I could keep building. And like, it's super, like it just pops out. Like if I somehow got the replacement part from Lego and then forgot about it in like a year, I would be like, why is this pink piece here? You know, but that way I can just keep building it. Yeah. Don't even worry about yeah. it. Exactly. Nice. All right. So that is what are we building this week? Let's go ahead and move over to brick mail. West, why don't you get us our first brick mail? Yeah. Brick mail. 
our first brick mail this week comes from a YouTube commenter, Fireboy31202. And Were you born March 1st, 2020, uh, 2002? <laughs> Oof. Just throwing that out there. Um, he says, in a fire. Were you born in a fire on March 1st, 2002? <laughs> Maybe. He says, or, or they write that my issue with the gifts with purchases are, um, or basically he's there. They write that uh, their issue with gift with purchases is that they live within budgets and that they would like to buy more Lego, but that they need to be responsible. Uh, it says they say that a lot of gift with purchases feels like these smaller sets uh, are a lot of these feel like they're smaller sets that adults adults want to buy. The books are my passion feels like fun, like a fun thing I would buy. Maybe they don't think it will do as well, but I feel like the gift with purchase is to cause FOMO. Also, I feel like a lot of people get the gift with purchase to resell it to. Uh, Fireboy actually has recently published a bunch more comments on our stuff, which we really appreciate. Uh, we love interacting with the audience in these comments. And, and you know, thank you for writing in. And, and I agree with you. I do think these gift with purchases are designed to create a sense of FOMO. Uh, they're limited, uh, and and I think Lego has kind of made a mistake of making them kind of fun sets that, just like you said, I would just buy that if I could, right? Like the taxi stand set, the moving truck set, yeah. they've that that the coffee van set that they created with the um, that wasn't for the jazz club, that was for the last. What was the coffee van set? released with the natural history museum yes it was it was the natural history yeah. museum but i got it with the orient express because it was a uh, yep okay that makes sense yeah remember it's like the fun little coffee van it's like the coffee uh it looks almost like a peugeot um like an old french truck um and it's got like the curtain on the side the red and white striped curtain and it's blue light blue yeah, you yep. you have that one, right? I think so. It's not coffee. I'm sorry. It's like a hot dog cart or truck, not coffee. Oh, okay. There is a coffee cart gift with purchase. I that was not what I was saying. Yes, a hot dog van. <laughs> sorry, I apologize. It's late. Um. Anyways, yes. West is sleepy. <laughs> that is um, that was the one that was released with the Natural History Museum they're all great and and i totally would love to see them as you know individual sets but grinch what do you think of uh fireboys comment um i mean i agree fireboy i'll give you some advice one thing that i do is i have a running uh wish list i've talked about it before but i'll reiterate now since we're talking about gift with purchases so much and like kind of how to beat the system i guess and like as soon as the set comes out you don't have to buy it day one like I've got my run. Like I just bought the Orient Express a couple months ago. I knew I wanted it, but I was waiting for a gift with purchase. And I think it was the Fortnite Brickhead. I was like, oh, I I want that gift with purchase. So I went ahead and bought the Orient Express at the time because it was something that was on my wish list. And so I I've got probably 20 sets on my wish list right now that I just haven't bought yet. Um, like the Jurassic World sets, I'm just waiting for those. I'm just waiting for the next gift with purchase that's inevitably inevitably going to come out here. Um, so that's a strategy you can use. And that way, you always have something to buy. And if you're budgeting for it, like, you know, you can you can keep your budget whole, right? Like, just because you can buy something in your budget doesn't mean you have to right away, right? So you can kind of like sit on it for a moment and then just build up your wish list a little bit or build it up so that that way when that gift with purchase is announced, you're like, okay, I've got a game plan. I'm going to go buy Orient Express now and get that, get that gift with purchase. And, you know, between you buying that Orient Express, like when a village sets announced, the next modular is going to be announced or whatever it is that you collect Fireboy, And that way you're not just buying a Lego set to buy a Lego set that you don't necessarily want or, you know, spending, you know, $80 on the secondary market to buy it or, you know, just 
buying something you already have that you really like that are like, oh, maybe let's buy this or you better, you know, you're not making an excuse to buy something at that point, right? That is my point. You're you're buying a set you were already budge- budgeting for and planning on purchasing. Mm-hmm. You're just you're just being a little bit more patient with that would be my advice. I like that idea. I think that's good. All right. Our next brick mail was from Calvin W2104. He also writes us on Instagram a lot, but he was responding to the last episode before our ideas episode, the scary themes. And he said, hope you guys are good. Monster fighters house haunted monster fighters haunted house. One zero two, two, eight is a top 10 set for me. And I know I, it's like, right. It's like 12 or 11 for me. I don't own it. I would maybe love to, I just, um, I'm I sure why I don't know. I just, I, I, I just, it, it is, it, it definitely is. Uh, but he says, I absolutely love it. Wes definitely, definitely needs to go to sleep talking about hidden side. Haha. I think he's referencing the meme that I posted of like the jealous girlfriend in bed. That's like, I bet he's thinking about other women. And then <laughs> it was Wes being like, hidden side was a classic stuff. Uh, it was just him talking about hidden side. It was pretty good. And then Calvin goes on to say hashtag 13 to 6. Uh, obviously referencing our joint episode with Mav, where Mav beat West in a head-to-head. <laughs> Can you guess the Lego set by the one-star review challenge with a total score of 13 to 6? And if we could get hashtag 13 to 6 to be a thing, that would be so funny. No, it like I want to see like tomorrow, like mm. next next presidential election, like next year. Sorry, like you know, presidential election going on next year. You know, there's there's always like, or you know, whatever. <laughs> in four years, I'd love it to be like you know, hashtag whatever America, whatever, whatever. You know, this that. You know, woohoo, woohoo, woohoo. Thirteen to six, like ah, <laughs> oh, that'd be so funny. Like two seventy to win, hashtag thirteen to six. <laughs> And like everybody, like what the, what the hell's going on? Like guys, you like you don't need that many electorates. Like what was like what's going on? I don't think it would be that funny. So, and Calvin, if you think you can do better, maybe if you were on the um the side that was seven more than six, you would think it's funny. Mm, mm, okay, okay. Well, I think we might need a rematch. So. Mav, you heard it here. I think we will plan that for the beginning of next year. Yeah. And that is a wrap of another episode of AFOL's Welcome. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you are listening to the show. If you would like to write the podcast, please email us at afallswelcome at gmail.com or follow us on Instagram at afallswelcome. Thank you for listening, and we will catch you on the next one.